Hello everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is John. I'm a full-time eBay reseller based in Melbourne, Australia. This is part three of our weekly theme where we explore why sales are slow. In part one, we looked at how pricing is oftentimes a range for buyers. Buyers have an expected range within which they expect to see the price of the items that they want to buy. If you price above this range or below this range, you run the risk of placing your buyers on alert. They will feel the need to figure out why the pricing wasn't within the predictable range. And as such, this hesitancy can lead to slow sales because we want our buyers to buy quickly, not take their time. In part two, we looked at how not all categories perform well on eBay. Some categories just have no traction on eBay because they're too small, uh, low supply, low demand, or there are some items where buyers just don't think about eBay at all. For example, groceries. In part three today, we're going to look at something that isn't a you can fix it thing, but rather, why don't you build it to counteract slow sales thing? And that is buyer loyalty or repeat buying. Here's the thing. When I think about businesses that do well or survive even through hard times, because sometimes the choice is make it through or go out of business, right? So think about hard times. Think about the pandemic that's just gone by. Um, the businesses that stayed alive were the ones with repeat buying. Uh, they were the businesses where they occupy the space in the buyer's purchasing set where coffee meant this seller, only this seller. Uh, quality meat, only this seller. Clothing, only this seller. Where predictability shaped the buying behavior and all these buyers who were feeling a bit tight didn't let go of their, of their loyal, I guess, their loyalty to, to, to these sellers. Instead, they said, you know what, we'll shave the fat out of everyone else that we don't feel loyalty towards. And I want that for you and me as eBay resellers as well. So here's what buyer loyalty comes down to. Great customer service, which means there was a process of exchanging money for product or service. And that whole um, experience left a good to great taste in the buyer's mouth. But that goodwill that you build up needs to be matched with a curated product or service set that makes the buyer keep coming back. Because if there's nothing for them to buy, the goodwill that you manufacture just dwindles away over time. Uh, a good example of this is when you travel. If you go to a country like, say, Japan, and you check into a nice hotel, and you are wowed by the culture, the politeness, the quality of the food, but you never go back there again, the goodwill is there, but you're not a repeat buyer. So when I think about eBay and how eBay is a product-based search engine, I cannot help but come back to this whole notion of needing to be a specialist store. Because you are, if you are a generalist store and you are a small generalist store, for example, 60 items, 100 items listed, 200 items listed, Reselling is so vast, you can sell anything for profit that, yes, in good times, buyers will discover you based on the products that you sell. But if there is, but the chances that they come back for another item is random because all those items cannot appeal to one buyer or one type of buyer or what we call like a target demographic. Uh, a washing machine, a pair of shoes, a laptop, a uh, stuffed toy, all of those things may appeal to one person on the planet, but they do not all appeal to a group of people. We want to set up our stores to appeal to a group of people. For example, working class mom. For example, parent of three. For example, uh, metal heads. For example, fans of medieval artwork, right? We want to narrow it down. So I encourage you to accept two things. Firstly, if you niche down, you will discover that you will still have a pretty big market because the internet is so vast. Second thing is that there is plenty of product for that niche. I cannot stress that enough. If you do proper research and you understand how to curate your inventory for a particular target market that needs to use eBay, obviously, you will find that you cannot buy enough stock you will run out of cash before you finish buying all the stock available. So 
Let me talk you through the process of someone discovering you on eBay. They go to the search engine to search for an item. They type in, say, um, Asics Runners, pink, blue, size 40. Okay? The product that they find introduces them to you. You give them a great customer experience. Like we're talking Japan tourism customer experience. Great experience. You know, you answer all their questions. You follow up wanting to see how they're going without asking for feedback. You just check on, hey, hope you enjoyed your, enjoyed your purchase. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, whatever. Maybe you might even ask them. Um, I noticed that you bought these shoes. These shoes are great for off-track running. Do you run off-track? Um, I would love to head to where you are one day. Can you recommend a track? You decide what you do, right? To build goodwill. You've built all this goodwill. The buyer goes, yeah, this seller is special. They stand out because they went above and beyond the, the hands-off dropshippery type seller who doesn't talk to me, fulfills the order. That's it. Okay? So that's, you've built up goodwill. They will remember you for a period of time. But they will remember you for the item that they bought as well. The next time they want to buy runners, they may check out your store again. If there are nothing, if there's nothing there that relates to running, nothing there that relates to any of their interests, that goodwill that you, that time and effort that you spend goes to waste. But if your store is a running based store, you've got headbands, you've got t-shirts, you've got shorts, you've got bottles. This buyer comes back and goes, huh, I need a bottle. I'm going to buy from this seller. I need, you know, new insoles. I'm going to buy from this seller. You can kind of see how specializing doesn't have to be ridiculously narrow. It can be broad, but it has to be related. So having a target buyer in mind leads to you building goodwill and not wasting that goodwill by not giving them another opportunity to buy. Here's why I love being a specialist store, and I've got six of them. Four for toys, two for baby clothes. I like it because when times get tough, buyers when they think about trimming down the fat, when they think about not spending on unnecessary things, they don't let go of their loyalty to sellers because you've essentially made it into their routine. You've made it into their, I suppose, preferred list of, of sellers for items that they like and regularly purchase. They may purchase at a lesser frequency, which, is, which happens across the board. You know, everybody buys less when times are hard, but they don't replace you with a with a equal or equivalent competitor. You know, if I'm if I enjoy buying my meat from a particular butcher because I know the quality, I enjoy having the chat, I don't feel awkward when I'm buying food, like I uh I get greeted by my name, they know the name of my children, all that goodwill is built over time, right? I don't suddenly think times are hard, I'm just gonna go buy clearance meat. No. I try and keep that butcher for as long as I can and I might make coffee at home instead because I have no established relationship with my cafe or any cafe. I might buy, I might hunt around for cheaper fuel because life's hard when things get tough. Why would I give up one of the enjoyable things that I get to do outside of my home, right? Why would I give up the smile of the butcher that I enjoy seeing every week just so that I can save a couple of bucks? No, life's hard. I want to keep that. So when you think about why sales are slow, in part one, we talked about pricing. Part two, we talked about uh, category performance. Those are things that you can fix within your business. But let's also look at how you can set up your business to combat slow sales during slow times. So consider curating inventory that is related, that can be bought together, that, in, that leads to combined purchases, right? More sales for less time and effort. So that when you build up this goodwill, it doesn't go to waste. That's part three. Looking towards repeat buyer and buyer retention. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for persisting with me through the part three. I know at times it feels a bit choppy because this is the first time I'm doing weekly themes. And I appreciate your patience with this series as well. Uh, hopefully with a bit of practice, a bit with many, many more reps, uh, this will be a lot more refined. Uh, I've been thinking about many more new topics and yeah, uh, I'm enjoying what is coming out of this structure as well. So I hope you're getting value from this. And if you have, uh, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.